Hi everybody, I'm Roland Milan from Aquin Barrow, and I'm here to talk to you about phosphorus removal within the UK. Asset Management Period 7, that's AMP 7, 2020 to 2025, wastewater treatment works upgrades are predominantly going to be based around the findings of the Water Industry National Environment Programme, WINEP, which has created new or updated phosphorus consents being applied to wastewater treatment works throughout the UK. Now these are from sites as low as 100 population equivalent to sites in excess of 1 million population equivalent, so a very broad range. But phosphorus is ubiquitous in our wastewater, being used in laundry soap and toothpaste and even prevent plumber solvency in drinking water. Anthropogenic sources account for over 40% of phosphorus discharged into receiving water courses, the result being that the wastewater treatment works becomes a point source discharge of phosphorus unless it's removed on site. There's two main egg techniques to remove phosphorus. Essentially, biological phosphorus removal through EBPR, Enhanced Biological Phosphorus Removal, or BNR, Biological Nutrient Removal. The alternative is the dosing of chemicals to precipitate out the phosphorus. Now, whilst each has their own advantages and disadvantages, the purpose of this presentation will focus on chemical precipitation. So, chemical phosphorus removal generally relies upon the reaction between a trivalent metal ion typically iron in the form of iron sulfate or iron chloride, or aluminium in the form of alum or polyaluminium chloride, with orthophosphate within the water streams, forming an insoluble metal phosphate. Although, now while alternative chemicals are available, including magnesium, calcium, and more recently lanthanum, these are typically not in common use. Phosphorus from anthropogenic sources can be broken down into three main categories. Reactive orthophosphorus, polyphosphates, and organic phosphates, of which only the reactive orthophosphates can react with the metal ions. Polyphosphates can be broken down through uh, biological wastewater treatment, can become available for chemical removal at later stages in the wastewater treatment process, whilst organic phosphates are more complex and difficult to remove. On a stoichiometric, that's a chemical balance basis, the reaction should occur on a one-to-one -one molar ratio between metal ion and phosphorus, However, since each wastewater at each site is a cocktail of compounds discharged into the catchment, each site's wastewater will have its own individual characteristic, as well as other factors. For example, retention times within the upstream sewers will affect chemistry within the water through, again, for example, the presence of sulphide from septicity. And for that reason, the real-world requirements will differ from the theoretical stoichiometric balance. Excess dosing of metal salts may have negative impact upon the wastewater treatment process since it removes alkalinity which is also required for nitrification, that's ammonia removal. Now, jar testing as a technique facilitates the rapid evaluation for the amount of metal salt effectively required to remove phosphorus from a wastewater stream. The technique is inexpensive and samples from different areas of sites can be tested both in parallel with each other and with different chemicals as well as different doses of the same chemical. Furthermore, since the test is upon reasonably sized samples, analytical suites from the treated water can be evaluated as required, with a range of analytical determinants including COD, alkalinity, total suspended solids, phosphorus of course, even uh, free iron, and also, if you're quite clever about it, sediment levels can be measured to evaluate the amount of sludge produced on site. When jar testing, a single bulk sample is used, which is then split into several jars as well as from which the different doses of chemical are applied to the jar. During a short, that's two minute rapid mixing phase, these samples are rapidly mixed, then allowed to flocculate at a more gentle mixing speed for about 30 minutes, and then settled, after which the supernatant is decanted and collected for analysis. Sludge levels are recorded at this point in order to evaluate the additional sludge make. Aquinvaro has undertaken these tests for many clients in the industrial and municipal sectors, facilitating cross-checking of actual site performance against lab data for the optimization of sites or even facilitating the most cost-effective chemicals to dose, as well as the dose requirement. For one client, we did this across 20 sites, which included the development of bespoke methods and calculations through which the generated sludge make and volume associated with chemical removal could be assessed. To summarize, if chemical dosing for phosphorus is your preferred option for pea removal, ensure that the dosing requirements are thoroughly evaluated through jar testing before proceeding with design. Thank you very much for your time. If you'd like to talk to me any further about chemical dosing for phosphorus removal, please contact me at inquiries at aquarienviro.co.uk.